Yeah, this has my, been my home for about three months now, the Chateau Arab Hotel in, um, I was going to say downtown Basra, it's not quite downtown Basra, it's just on the edge. It's built, I think they started building it about 1934, finished about 1936, I believe. And what the camp over there is on is an old airfield, and they used to land here, so we understand, on the way to India during the days of the empire. Refuel, fuel and people, and on they were going. This was the hotel um, as part of that hop, if you like, into India. But they also, I believe, they used to come here for the holidays in the Riviera of the Gulf in Basra. Yeah, Gulf. Hi, I'm Julie. Hi, I'm Rhys. Nice, nice to meet you. Sarah. Nice to meet you. Bruce. How are you? Howdy. I'm just the camera guy. Hi, I'll take you straight out the back and see the front entrance. Oh. This oh, used to be course. the front entrance. Um, obviously you've got, that used to be the old air traffic control tower. Yep. Which is just for the airfield over the other side. Yep. It's quite nice though, you just come down in the evening, just as the sun's setting, you can hear the call to prayer. Sit down, chill out. Get away from the office for five minutes. So we'll go around and I'll take you up onto the roof now. There's still offices down that end. As you get further down that way, it's more accommodation. And then you start walking into more of the uh, Jundi offices. Mind you step on this, it's an extra wire. Just there's the skylights for the P-Jot. But yeah, the you used to have seats and tables out here. So there's another thing that I found in common with Basra and New Orleans. There are two cities that I've found human feces right where people are living. Squatters defecating where they're staying in someone else's house, and the Iraqi military defecating all over the top of the building they live in and work in. Well, the, the, the actual hotel itself, right, the, right now it's being used for the, uh, it's called the Jock, the Joint Operations Center, uh, part of the Bayak, and inside the Jock is where all the other... Uh, right across the river front there, that used to be the old disco club for all the bath parties, uh, bath party members that used to roll through here. Um, they've now, since then, stripped it. It's pretty, pretty much gutted. Um, there's not much left on, of it. There was a floating barge that was a restaurant that's across the uh, river uh, that's uh, half sunken, half sticking out. They're looking to implode that to yank it out. That's that's an, another future project. So wait, I got a question. So you used to shave out here? Yeah, I, I used to come out here in the morning, lather up to shave and brush my teeth and uh, be sitting right here on the balcony while I'm brushing my teeth with the lather, soaking in and getting ready to shave. Uh, the Jundis would piss right off the roof and be like trickling right over. Next thing you know, I'm stepping back in. Oh, Claire, all right, get back out there. No one appreciates the destruction, at least for the Basra area, for Iraq began during the Iran-Iraq war. The city was shelled multiple times, so this was literally a war front for almost eight years prior to the Gulf War and prior to um, the uh, Iraq war that we've recently had. So the devastation has been ongoing for over 30 years. All the vehicles in here were confiscated from uh, the militias down in Basra City during charge of the nights. They would have been used for some illegal activity or, as you can see, some of them were being used by the militias as, uh, as vehicles to start using them to carry weapons and ammunition and actually use them as technicals, if you like, to, to fire out from. And you'll see quite a few of them have got bullet holes all over them as well. And is Roy lifting the radio out of this Mercedes? <laughs> I dread to think. Let's get the boot. Just got it. I'm looking for bodies. Some jumper cables. Hey, look, I told you I had a six disc changer. <laughs> Once upon a time. Once upon a time. <laughs> yeah. Someone's pride and joy. It was somebody's pride and joy.
because the owners aren't coming back to claim their cars. Huh? Well, funny enough, they are. They do try and get them back, but um, they were confiscated for a reason. Nothing a little hot glue won't fix. No. It's, uh, yeah. And do you know who was this IA that found it? Yes, yeah. I Iraqi Army found it. So it's really doing some work. They, oh, they're great. Doing an excellent job of securing Basra. Really good job indeed. And they're find, finding these uh, IDs relatively regularly too. And they're doing a great job. And something like this, how much destruction could it do? Yeah, it wouldn't it'd spoil your day. Definitely spoil your day. Wow. I showed you the picture of 107 rocket. And that um, launcher in my office, there's the rocket story. Those are still active? Oh, yeah. Uh, rockets to aim at uh, base locations and for indirect fire, basically, stand off by quite a few kilometres and uh, send them on their way for someone to get the bad news at the other end. Ruin their day. Yeah, as you can see, those were manufactured in 2006, so they're quite modern weapons as well. So, where would they have gotten them? Across the border. fit in there. How's he gonna get out? <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, thank you. Well, we came here <laughs> to, to turn around and go back. And uh, five minutes before, we could have known not to board the helicopter. <laughs> But it didn't work like that. But we're most fortunate that they're bringing us back. Otherwise, these have been our accommodations, and we'd have been hanging out. Well, today was just a guided tour of the Bayak Hotel, yeah. personal, personally given to us by Colonel Stanford himself. Can't beat that. Oh, I hear our chopper. Yeah. Do you hear something? Whoops. It could be our flight out. No. He yeah. said 5-0, so... Well, they better not be. Let's go! Yeah, really. Want to come early? <laughs> okay. The safety is our number one issue, and you always have to be uh, prepared for anything. Nothing like the, uh, the ambiance of the Chateau Larab Hotel, but no, it's great. It's great working with the Rockies. They're, they're a good bunch. And um, as we said before, they really suddenly produce the goods when it's needed, and they're a capable army which is, it, it's heartening to see.